Hello, White Mountain Elementary students. This is Miss Ferguson, and we are continuing on today with our Hank, the Cow Dog, the Case of the Raging Rottweiler. Today, I am reading Chapter 5, A Mysterious Phone Call in the Night. So there we were, Slim and I, in the midst of a sorrowful inspection of the damaged window panes when the phone rang. Slim scowled. Who could that be calling in the middle of the dadgum night? He glanced down at me. What was I supposed to say? I didn't know who was calling, and it wasn't the middle of the night. It was maybe nine o'clock. Slim headed for the phone in that slow walk of his. Oh, and he was muttering under his breath. Sometimes I think the world was better off when we didn't have any phones. A man could spend a quiet evening without all the, that's fine, ring all you want. I ain't going to walk one bit faster. At last he found the phone and put the receiver to his ear. Hello? Yes, yes, who is this? Oh, Joe, didn't recognize your voice. Nothing much, just doing a little house cleaning, me and the dogs. He gave me a wink. What's up? Oh, oh, that's not so good. Uh-huh. Yep, well, we'll keep an eye open for him. If he comes around, I'll try to pin him up. See you in the morning. He hung up the receiver and stared at the floor. I told him that big dog was going to be big trouble. His eyes came up. That Rottweiler jumped out of the pickup on the way home. And Joe couldn't find him in the dark. Joe's coming back down tomorrow to look for him. Was that a big deal? Not to me. I mean, I had gotten my point across to the mutt, and I was pretty sure we would never see his face around our ranch again. Time and time again, history has proved that the best way to prevent trouble with strange dogs is to be firm with them the first time they show up. That's just what I had done, and I was so unconcerned and unworried about Bruiser that I sat down in the middle of the floor and began hacking at a flea just behind my left ear. Hack, hack, hack. Have we discussed the hacking procedure? We dogs use it on unruly fleas who are silly enough to bite us in, in sensitive spots such as behind the ears. As you may know, fleas not only bite, but they also steal blood. Some dogs put up with it because, well, I don't know why they put up with it. Because they're too lazy to take flea countermeasures, I suppose. But I don't put up with it, not for a minute. Hack, hack, hack. We have several flea countermeasures, and the one I use most often is the hacking procedure. In this procedure, the bitten dog drops his bottom side on the ground, or on the floor if he happens to be inside the house, which I was. Once he has achieved the hacking position, he selects one of his two hind legs for the job. I know this may sound complicated, but bear with me. He selects one of his two hind legs for the job. You're probably wondering why we use hind legs instead of front legs. Good question. The reason we use hind legs for this procedure is that front legs are just not capable of delivering a good, robust hack. Front paws are okay for your rubbing or scratching procedures, but fleas seldom respond to rubs or scratches. They have to be hacked, and that's a job for a huge muscular hind leg, of which I had two. See, your hind legs are hinged in the middle, which means that with the proper training, an experienced dog can just get the right angle for his hack. Hack, hack, hack. I chose the left hind leg for the job. You're probably wondering why the left and not the right. Great question, and here's the scooby on that. In making our hack calculations, we follow a simple equation. You might want to make note of this. Left ear, left hind leg. Right ear, right hind leg. That makes sense, doesn't it? If I had selected the right leg instead of the left, I would have found it difficult, maybe even impossible, to direct a lethal force of claws to the target area because, well, I'm not sure why, actually. It had something to do with a very complicated law of physics, and we don't have time for that. Just take my word for it. You can't hack a left ear with a right leg. Okay, now, let's put this all together and see how it works. Hack, hack, hack. Hack, hack, hack. Did you notice that I increased the velocity of my hack? I did, and if you're probably wondering, huh? Slim was 
standing over me, glaring down with stern eyes. All at once, I became aware of several, quite a few, were those dog hairs floating in the atmosphere of the uh, living room? Hank, I told you not to shed all over my pretty house. Well, yes, sure, but there was a reason for the uh, hairs. See, when you hack a flea, you just naturally hack up a few, well, hairs, dog hairs, and what's a hair to do once it's been hacked up and released into the atmosphere? It floats around. It's a natural, organic process, part of nature's plan for the... He nudged me with his toe and shot a bony finger toward the door. That's it, Bozo. Outside. You can shed hair on the porch. What? Wait, I can explain. What did he expect me to do? Sit there and let the stupid flea bite my ear off and drain my entire body of bodily fluids? Hey, that was my blood, and I wasn't going to let some sniveling little flea. He nudged me again with his foot, this time a qu a, quite a bit harder. Out! Fine, I could take a hint. If he didn't care any more about his dogs than that, if he expected us to sit around like ninnies and be devoured by biting hypodermic fleas, just fine. I would just march myself outside and spend that night on his broken down two-bit porch. And I would never come back into his slummy old house again. Never. Come winter when the north wind howled and groaned, he would want a friend to share his fire. But it wouldn't be me, Charlie. I would be out on the porch, suffering in silence and hacking all the fleas I wanted to hack. And the next time he wanted a loyal dog to join him on a mouse hunt, I would be busy. When he called my name and begged me to share his boring life, I would give him a heartless stare and say, No thanks, I'm hacking fleas, and I'm sure you wouldn't approve. Holding my head at a proud angle, I marched myself to the front door, then beamed him a killer look that said, Is it possible that you're really doing this? Our eyes met. Well, Pooch, I'm sure going to miss you tonight, all the dog hairs and bad smells. Y'all have a sweet dream here, and don't even think about barking all night, because come morning, I won't be my usual charming self. Usual charming self? Ha! Huh, that was a laugh. But he didn't need to worry about me barking in the night. Dogs who bark at night are on the job, and I had no intention of working the night shift after being thrown out of a house and home over something as silly as a few dog hairs. No, sir, I intended to sleep, and if the monsters came up around the house in the dead of night, Slim could bark at them himself. With that, I turned my nose toward the door. Slim pushed it open, and I marched outside. He would be sorry, of course, but he had done this to himself. I couldn't be blamed. Once outside on the porch, I turned around, sat down, and stared at him through the screen. I beamed him looks of deepest tragedy and betrayal. He noticed. Are you going to sit there all night staring at me through the screen door? I might, yes. I sure might. Well, enjoy yourself, because I'm going to bed. Oh, and don't worry. Stubtail will be joining you just as soon as I flush him out from under my bed. Nighty-night. He left. Two minutes later, he returned with Stubtail and tossed him out with me in the creel cool world. Cold, cruel world, I should say. Although it actually wasn't cold. This being, well, never mind. Drover landed on the porch beside me. He avoided my gaze and curled up into a little ball. Well, I see you got thrown out. What did you do this time? Nothing. I didn't do anything. I was just hiding under the bed and minding my own business. And the next thing I knew, Slim threw me out. Was it possible that you were shedding hairs under his bed? Well, I don't think so. I wasn't trying to shed any hairs. Hmm, yes, this is sounding very familiar, Drover. For you see, I was thrown out on the same phony charge. You were? Yes, I was minding my own business and hacking at a flea when Slim blundered in and accused me of shedding hairs. Maybe I hacked off a hair or two, but that's no reason for throwing us out. It's not fair. I thought he was our friend. Yes, and some friend he turned out to be. Our friendship collapsed under the weight of two or three measly dog hairs. Maybe we should run away. Drover, just pack our bugs and disappear into the night. That might teach him a lesson on how to treat his loyal dogs, the cad. Yeah, but then we'd have to leave. Well, yes, of 
course we'd have to leave. That's the whole point. Yeah, but it's awful dark, and you know how I am about the dark. I beamed him a scorching glare. This is a matter of principle, Drover. Are you going to let your irrational fear of the dark stand in the way of your search for justice? How far would we have to go? We'd have to go, hmm, I'm not sure. I guess that would depend on how badly our feelings are hurt over this deal. I'm feeling pretty outraged. Maybe we ought to go, oh, say 20 or 25 miles. I heard him gulp. In the dark? Of course in the dark, unless you want to carry a flashlight in your mouth. I don't have a flashlight. Neither do I, so that settles it. There was a long moment of silence. Okay, what about something shorter? Say five miles? That's still a long way. Drover, if we're going to quit our jobs and run away from home, we need to go somewhere. Otherwise, Slim will never learn from his mistake. He needs to feel some pain for this. And if we can't go at least five miles, we should just forget it. Yeah, but what about coyotes? I gave that some thought. Coyotes could be a mm, problem. They're pretty scary guys. Good point. Okay, suppose we only go one mile. Maybe that would... Just then we heard the howl of a distant coyote. Or better yet, maybe we could just hike down to the barn and spend the night there. You think that would be far enough? Oh, sure. It would deprive Slim of our warmth and presence on his porch. When he wakes up in the morning, he'll look out here and see that we're gone. It might just give him such a scare that he'll change his ways before it's too late. What do you say to that? Well, I guess I can do it. Are you sure it's safe? Of course I'm sure. What could happen to us between here and the barn? Well, okay, I guess I guess I can make it if this old leg will stay with me. Forget the leg, son. Saddle up and let's move out. I jacked myself up the porch and beamed a cold glare at the house. Goodbye, old house. Goodbye, Slim. We're quitting our jobs and leaving this hateful place, never to return until tomorrow. If the monsters come out, too bad. We're signing off. You're on your own. And with that, we left the porch and began our long and dangerous journey to Slim's raggedy little barn. And that's the end of Chapter 5. Tune in for tomorrow for Chapter 6. Thank you and have a great day.